It's the fellow passenger. Um, this video is not about dub techno. It's about one of the techniques I use to add an element of randomization to my music. If you're just starting out and you don't have Max for Live or you just feel that that is a bit too frightening uh, at this point and that drawing all your automation by hand takes far too much time and it's just not random enough, this video is for you. If you like what I do and want to sponsor me on Patreon, it would be much appreciated. Then you will also be able to access the Ableton project files as well as other goodies. Uh, there's a sound library for the, or a few sound libraries from the previous video, for example. You will find the link in the description. Before we get going, I just want to have a quick little chat about something. Um, I don't know what your relationship is to dub techno, um, if you have one at all. Um, although this video is not about the genre, um, just want to say that if you search for the term on YouTube, you will just find endless mixes of what I consider elevator music. Um, and I'm not sure who's making all that stuff, clogging up all the airwaves. I encourage you to search for things like Rhythm and Sound, Maurizio, um, Basic Channel, Poll, etc. Um, I will put some links in the YouTube description. Um, so if you're watching this on Instagram, you will be able to find um, a link in my bio, which will take you to my YouTube channel. Let's get going. <clears throat> so in this tutorial, we're only going to use uh, Ableton's stock plugins um, using the Ableton's analog, but you can actually use anything. The only thing we want to do is having, in this case, I'm just using some saw waves and um, a cutoff filter. So if you have a synth that can do that, you will be fine. I have prepared um, just a few chords that run in the loop. We're going to extend that loop a bit. So now in Ableton, you can go into your little loop and then you can add automation in there. Uh, you will find the button here where you can draw in the automation. It, um, that is in Ableton 11. It sits somewhere around here in, A in Ableton 10. So here we check what we want to automate. So we choose the analog, which is our synthesizer. And then we go in to find the right parameter and we are choosing the filter. So if you right click here, then you can actually just have some predefined automation shapes, as you can see there. Oh, whoops, let's select everything. Do the same thing. So now when we're running this loop, the filter will stop cutting off always at the same point in the loop. So here is where the trick is to create something that's going to feel a bit more random. That is if we unlink this automation loop with the main loop. So we click there. Now we can make the filter cut off loop shorter. So when that's going to repeat more often than the actual melody. So let's try this. Um, so if we select this area. And when we play this back now, it's going to overlap at a different point every time. This loop is perhaps a little bit long, um, so we just make it a bit shorter so we get more variation in the cutoff. So as you can hear there, the variations become quite um, apparent. Here you can see that blue line, you can see how the automation is moving. Now, as the frequency is turned up to max, it will go from sort of halfway to max. But if we turn that down, we can change the range it's covering. It's still going quite high. So then you can obviously go into the automation and just change the, the maximum there just to make it sound a bit more muted. You can also use the same technique um, to just manipulate effects. And what we're going to do now, we're going to use the return channel for, there is by default, there is one for reverb and one for delay in Ableton. I'm using the reverb here. I've already changed it a bit to change the reverb tail. And to be able to add the automation, we'll have to go here and find the mixer. And then we go and find, sorry, yeah, mixer. And then we'll find the reverb channel. And then we have to remember to unlink it. 
and then we uh, have to remember to actually turn up the volume to max on our channel so we can send all the signal to, to the reverb chain. And then we can go in and add our automation. I'm just going to make these little spike here. Maybe I made that a little bit too thin. We will get there eventually. Oh, there we get a little bit of reverb. Ah, oh, that's what we're after. So every so often you get the reverb to actually hit and send a lot of it. Uh, well, you get the, the chord sending off to the reverb at the right time. But it's important to remember the length of these um, sequences for effects or for cutoff or whatever, keep them at different lengths and make sure that they are not dividable by the length of the original melody loop. So you just get these, get these sort of more random feeling syncopations. And now we can go in and do this on the delay as well. Um, so do the same thing, we have to turn up the volume, we create a new length for the, uh, I'm just going to choose a default shape and then you do that at a different length again. So there you go, then you get a bit of a dub vibe. Change that a bit. So now as you hear these the cut off frequency, the delay and the reverb, they all happen at different times, even though it's the same loop playing and over and over again. So this can go on for quite a while. So I encourage you to go and test this technique on using all sorts of other effects. Why I used return channels instead of just putting an effect at the end of the channel where I got the chords was because if I would have done that, I could have and then added this automation to the dry wet control. You would never get these tails ringing out and the reverb and the delay just keep echoing because as soon as you turn it to dry, you would just cut that off. And that's why you choose these separate channels. And I encourage you to just try this technique using loads of different effects, chain them up in a different way. Uh, on a return channel, you don't only need to have a reverb, you can have a reverb and then some bit crusher and then some delay and whatever combination you want. I would love to hear what you're doing using this technique. And uh, if you enjoy this video, please go and sponsor me on Patreon if you can. Uh, you will be, um, if you do, you will be able to download this project file. You will also be able to download the project file for um, the loop that you heard in the beginning. If you like that version better, um, I encourage you to try it out and uh, there will be more videos next week. Thank you very much.